Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Mirela and what I do here is reviewing random products and different things and really anything that might catch your attention. Um, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the flight from Frankfurt International to JFK, New York City. This was a Condor flight and the, con uh, and the flight number was DE2016. So uh, the journey took place at the very end of July. So last month, it, 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 the experience is pretty uh, fresh and recent. And I just wanted to share this with all of you uh, traveling at this time. So the way the review is going to go is I am going to be talking a little bit about a check-in experience, then passport control and security check, boarding, um, then in-flight experience with pictures of food and um, short clip demonstrating all of the entertainment that they have on board. You're going to be able to see all the movies and shows they offer. And then at the end, I will talk about rechecking your luggage for customs if you need to catch another flight forward within the US. So if this flight is just your connecting flight to another destination in the United States, at the end of this video, I'm going to I'm also going to uh, mention how to do the rechecking your luggage uh, for the um, for the customs. So, uh, Condor flights depart from Terminal 1 Area C. Now, upon arrival to Terminal 1 Area C, you need to find the baggage drop-off counters that say traveling to US, but you need to get into that line. Don't go into another line with all of the other Condor flights because they are not going to receive you there. So, about the luggage. Okay, uh, first the carry-on. My bag was really heavy and it was big. It was obviously large and they did not ask me to see it, to weigh it. They didn't check tag or they didn't do anything with this bag. So um, I'm pretty certain that you can just like overload this bag and if you have extra in your uh, regular check-in luggage, then you can kind of like just um, you can put the extra weight in this in your carry-on bag. So my bag was 25 pounds and I knew it's too much. I was just kind of hoping they're gonna let they're gonna let us through and they guess what they didn't even ask. So for the check-in uh, check luggage now in the economy class weight limit is 23 kilograms or 50 pounds. The gentleman that uh, checked in right before us had uh, his bag was 24.6 kilograms. I, I saw this and um, they did it didn't seem that they even said anything about the about this bag being overweight. So like they, they kind of just like dropped the bag on the on the thing and they just like gave him the boarding packs and he left. So once our turn came up, I had two bags, but we were three passengers. So we were entitled to three bags. Uh, mine were 26 and 27 kilograms which is 57 and 59 pounds now the person at the at the counter wasn't really too pleased with uh, how much overweight I was but then I kind of used the argument to say that we were entitled to three bags but because we had to recheck the luggage um, uh, it's just more convenient to travel with two and they uh, so they can't they let us go so I, I'm thinking up to 25 kilograms, you should be okay without having to worry that anybody's going to pull you aside and say, oh, you have to pay extra or you have to um, you have to take something out of your bag. Uh, by the way, in case you they make you pay, there is a flat fee of 150 euros or maybe 150 dollars, which is about the similar right now. So uh, don't get don't get too overweight. It's <laughs> it, it's going to be expensive. Now, um, after you check in the luggage, you still need to complete the security check. And this is where they will scan your carry-on luggage. And you also need to go through the passport control. So now from here, you just have to keep on walking because it's not going to be exactly close. Um, security check of your carry-on luggage will come first. So our gate was B44. So we kept walking following a letter B. There were a few minutes of walking before we got there, but you can't miss it, that letter B, because it's, it, it's huge once you get to it. So, and here's the tip. If you are traveling with young children, 
go ahead and skip the regular line and just go into the line that's marked for the, um, uh, the babies with the strollers and the wheelchair access. Because we did not, I didn't have the strollers because my kids are three and five. We don't use that anymore. But we were still pulled out of the regular line by the staff and they put us into the, this other line for the um, wheelchair access and the stroller access. And this line was virtually, there was no line. It was, it, we just went through so quickly and so smoothly and it was just so awesome. So once that is done, you still have to complete the passport control. Now the passport control, is this is where you start looking for the gate numbers. Okay, because passport control boots are designated for every few gates. So there is no everybody going into same passport control on the same passport control counters and then just everybody being bundled up into this huge ocean of people just waiting to get their passports checked. No. So uh, the, the way they did it in Frankfurt is just really awesome. So you will see signs showing what range of gate numbers the boot is for. For example, it could say gate B20 to B46. This is probably not exact number, but if your gate number is within that range, then that's where you're going. So in our case, there were three double boots, which was six officers, and the wait was literally like there was no wait. There was like a minute long wait to get through the passport control. Now, um, if your gate was B70, then you would go to the other, uh, then you would keep walking until you find the passport control boots that are designated for your gate. This is, this was just so awesome. Although this is, the, this appeared to be a regular procedure for them, I kind of felt like VIP because it was just, it was just so short and quick. So once you are through the passport control, now you're entering the area where you can get duty-free shops, souvenir shops, buy food, snacks, or, or whatever, and that's where you're gonna be looking for your gate. So uh, now the next is once the boarding starts, here is a tip for you. So do not rush to get into that economy class line because as soon as the business and the priority passengers are in, they will open the business class counter for the economy class too. What's going to happen is they will simultaneously board passengers waiting in the economy line and direct rest of the economy passengers to use the business class line. So it's really effective and the best way to do it is to kind of be just sitting in that area near the counters once they, uh, where the, uh, where the, blah, 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 sorry, where the uh, boarding counters are. If you just sit there and you just wait for all the business and premium people to go in, you can just hop right up and as soon as they open it for the economy, there you go. No wait, no standing and no, no nonsense. Now about the in-flight experience. Our flight was operated by Smartlinks, not Condor. Now the aircraft was really big. Seats were spacious, overhead luggage compartment aisles was spacious. It was really good. Um, there were three rows of seats. Now, the side rows had only two seats per row, but the middle row had four seats in the same row. And here is the tip. If you are party of three passengers, go ahead and book the seats in this middle row and book both aisles and book one of the two seats that are in the middle. It is less likely that anybody will want to purchase the seat to sit and be like bundled up right between you all. So if you end up getting A, B, C and then leave the last, uh, leave the last seat in the aisle open, in that case, somebody will likely want to purchase that seat. Now what we did is uh, we bought two aisles and one of the two seats in the middle and we were lucky enough that nobody wanted to get that seat so we ended up having the entire row for ourselves. Now what I would do is if somebody did end up sitting there I would just ask them to switch the seats and I would give them one of the aisles and then I would still have my kids near me and we, we would be good. The blankets. Okay guys. If you enter this aircraft and there's no blanket available already on your seat and there's only a pillow, you need to go ahead and ask for the blanket as soon as the aircraft takes off. 
because what happened in our case, there were only, uh, only pillows were displayed on the seats, there was no blankets. And I assumed that they're going to be bringing the blankets later, but that didn't happen because they only had a few blankets available on the flight. So what happened was whoever asked for the blanket first was the person that got it. And other passengers just, they just didn't have enough for everybody. Entertainment. Now the screens uh, on the airplane were not working, but we were able to log into their entertainment by using the passport that was provided by the, by the staff. And we were able to watch the movies and the TV shows on our cell phone and the kids' tablets. What they had available was um, from new releases, there was The Matrix Resurrection, The Fallout, Dune, The Many Saints of Newark, Best of Enemies, uh, Worst of Friends, Tom and Jerry, The Witches, and Shaft. From classics movies, they had Doctor Sleep, Live by Night, 42, the Wedding Singer, Everything, The Shawshank Redemption, Let Them Talk, The Way Back, Oceans 11, Oceans 12, Oceans 13, and Oceans 8. They also had four German movies. Uh, from the street TV shows in a drama category, they had The Watchmen, Season 1 only, Grey's Anatomy, there was a Season 17, Supernatural, season 13 and Westworld season 2. From uh, In comedies uh, section they had Bob's Burgers, only four episodes of season 8. Then they had a few episodes of Family Guy. They had Blackish uh, season 5. They had five episodes. Modern Family, they had six episodes of season 11. Young Sheldon, they had five episodes of season 2. Friends, uh, five episodes of season five, and then there was a few episodes of the Big Bang Theory and The Middle. Uh, for the kids, uh, selection was very limited. Um, so they only had one episode of each of these shows that I am going to mention right now. So it's a Big City Greens, Bunked, The Muppets, Disney DuckTales, Guardians of the Galaxy, Scooby-Doo, The Flintstones, Spider-Man, Vampirina, and The uh, Lion Guard. So all of these shows were only one episode each. And honestly, my kids are three and five, and they didn't care for none of them. Uh, there were also a few episodes of uh, National Geogra uh, Geographic and some lifestyle shows and games. The next thing I want to talk about is food. So you can see the pictures here. Uh, this is what we were served for breakfast. This was also uh, this was also a main meal. So what they had on this plate was a uh, pasta with lentils. I personally did not uh, I did not eat it and and I did not uh, I did I did not like it too much. Uh, then uh, you have the potato salad. Potato salad was good. Uh, there was the bread. The bread was really cold. It was like cold from the fridge. It wasn't heated to where like you get this warm bread and then you put the butter on it. No, it was cold. Uh, then there is a cheese. There is a butter and uh, there was a dessert. The dessert was pretty delicious. The next meal that was available was like a dinner snack. And uh, here you, ha um, you can see the picture on the outside. It's just it looked really good. It's some kind of a baked uh, bread with cheese inside, but on the inside, it just it was it was not good. It was not delicious. It was it was warm. It was heated up and it was warm, but I get it just was not to, to our liking. Um, as far as the water, juice, coffee, beverages, and spirits, this was available throughout the flight. They went with a the cart um, serving uh, drinks several times I think two or three times and then if you would want to have a drink a coke or a juice or coffee or water or tea or whatever you just have to go and ask for it and you will receive it for free there was no charge to it but um, for the alcoholic uh, drinks the first drink was free once they go through with that cart um, the second drink you you have to pay for it and I imagine that all of the next drinks you have to pay for it because they go twice with that card. So I'm not sure is it the first time only you get it or you get the one the second time they come with that card too. I'm, I'm not sure. 
Um, I saw that they had a selection of beers, vodka, and hard liquor, and wine. There was also a duty-free shop on board. Um, they will hand the, they will hand the, like the magazines showing you what else they have. There's, it's a pretty good selection of, um, of jewelry and the makeup and fragrances and some watches and some pretty nice and cool things. Like if you haven't done your gift shopping, you can in, in their duty free on board, you, you're going to be able to get some pretty things. Masks were optional. But 95% of the people had masks on our flight, uh, including staff. Speaking of the staff, these guys were great. They were just, they just felt like they just woke up and they were so happy to go to work. And they were just so kind and they were like really helping me with the kids, at least in my case. And they, it was, it was really, I, I, I'm, I'm just so grateful to this crew. It was, they made our journey so much easier. Now, uh, I'm coming to the point of rechecking, talking about the rechecking your luggage. So once you land, once you get out of your uh, aircraft, you're going to go through the passport control. And once you get out of, uh, once you are through the passport control, uh, you're immediately going to walk into the area with the bags. Now you are picking up your luggage. Um, once you get your bag off the conveyor belt, now you are exiting. There's, there's only one way to, to go out. So you just go to that door and then you take a right and then on your first quick right there is a there is an area where you are going to drop off your bag um there was a, the lady that we, we were talking we were standing in a line um she was going to a different de destination and she came from a different flight also international not even the same airline but they her bag was also she was rechecking it there so i assume that all the rechecking bags are going into that space in the worst case scenario what you can do is you can ask because there's a person that is standing right there next to where you are picking up your bags and you can ask this person to that that's what i did and uh what to do next and then she told me exactly where to go and where to where to recheck my bag so once you recheck your bag now you are getting to your connecting flight now we arrived at the terminal one and we were departing again from the terminal five so i was able to do all of this drop off my bag at the terminal one i did not have to take it with me but if you need to the luggage carts are allowed to use uh, on the sky train so if in the event that you have to take your luggage from terminal let's say one to terminal five via skytrain you are allowed to take the cart and put your bags in the cart and then you can push it all into the skytrain another solution would be that uh, once in the area where you pick up the bags there is a i think it's called a preta porter service it's the airport staff that helps you to uh, move your bags from one place to another. You have to pay for this. So you could just, I think it was like $7 per one bag or maybe $12. I think it was $7 per one bag. I'm not exactly sure. So what you will do is ask them to, to handle your, bag, your luggage and you pay them the, the, the service fee. And then you can also help them, ask them to help you figure out where to go because these guys know. So this is what I would do if I, if mine wasn't that easy. But luckily the lady helped me. It was really easy to to navigate. So it, the, there was no there was no issues. But I was a little bit concerned about how am I gonna do that. Especially I was worried about how will I go between the terminals with two small kids and this huge backpack and two huge bags. But uh, none of that happened. So um, yeah, everything turned out right for us. Anyways, guys, I'm sorry this was long, but I, I just really wanted to make sure to give you all of the right and all of the information that, that, that was used, that would be, that could be useful for you. Um, so that's all for this one. And thank you guys for watching and have a great day. Bye bye.